Yo, welcome to another video on my channel and today I'm going to teach you guys how to get money and gems extremely fast in Anime Story. This is basically a follow-up video to my how to get Rebirth 100 extremely fast video. And if you like my content, make sure you like and subscribe. So, to start things off, I'm going. we are at spawn, right? Because it's, it's basically the easiest spot to go in the entire game. Uh, this video is for newbies and for players that are experiencing this game and maybe are a bit lost and not to actually get money. So, if you start from spawn and you go all the way over to the bandit camp, there's an NPC up there. Now, that NPC is actually pretty valuable for high rebirth players because Kintoki is basically where you sell your unwanted, unwanted items. Now, Players might think, oh, I'm going to sell gold and iron, maybe even diamond, emeralds, and all these things. Don't do this, please. Don't sell emeralds, don't sell diamonds, don't sell these items. They're extremely rare. It's just don't sell these items because compared to, let's say, an enemy drop, these only spawn every 10 to 20 minutes. So it's not efficient to sell those items for gems. Because let's say I kill a couple of bandits, right? Let me just kill a couple till it drops an item. So it dropped blade remains. I dropped 21. If I was going to mine an item, it's only going to give me a single drop, right? Now, I'm rebirth 100, and maybe the person that's watching this video is rebirth maybe 0, maybe 1. So every single time you kill an enemy, you'll only get a single drop. Either way, it's not efficient to sell uh, mining drops. You should never sell them because let's say in update 3 they uh, make it so that there's a golden weapon and it costs you like 500 gold to craft it, something like that. Uh, then you don't have any gold and the only way to actually get them would be to either AFK on your private server or server hop. But since it's a new update there will be a lot of player server hopping, a lot of people using macros, mining stuff, and it's not going to be a, uh, an enjoyable experience. So make sure you don't sell any or drops. Now, however, you can sell anything else. Now, also don't sell cursed gems. I mean, it's self-explanatory. Don't sell tokens and don't sell boss drops. I mean, I shouldn't really be explaining. Uh, should be really explaining that, right? So only sell stuff that drops from common enemies that you don't really need. Now. What stuff is really good to sell for gems, right? So you can sell uh, you can sell broken armor pieces, Namekian plots, and demonites. Which uh, of these are the easiest to get? Well, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Now I'm not talking about selling items for gold because personally I don't think it's even remote remotely worth it. Because let's say I'm Rebirth 100, right? So. If I was going to farm, let's say, monkeys to get fur, every single time I kill a monkey and they drop an item, it drops me 21 items. So it drops me 25, so I multiply so I multiply that by 20, right? So if I multiply by 10, I get 150 coins. If I multiply by 20, I get 500. Now, 500 coins from a drop is kind of bad because I can grind money doing quests much faster Plus, I can grind other items. Now, the best way to actually grind coins would be uh, if you do the late last quest, which is the quest in Hollow World. Now, this quest is good for people that can't one-shot Cybermans, because if you watched my video on how to rebirth faster, you'll notice that I can basically instantly kill every single enemy besides the Hollows. So if I was going to grind on hollows, I would come over here, I would aggro every single enemy, and then I would basically let them stack together, and then I would kill them. I could probably just melee them to death, but this is how you can grind coins. It took me like 20 seconds to do this, and it's really, really, really not that great to do. So, if you actually want to grind coins doing quests, and you can one-shot uh, the cybers, you can just grab this quest, kill every single cyber, and then instantly reset. It gives you half the coins, but it also drops you fragments. Plus, it's much easier. So, uh, all I need to do is I just need to go over here, right, to this spot. I press chronostasis, I one-shot every single cyber, 
I reset and then I talk again to Yamcha and I grab the quest again. So this way I can get a lot of coins extremely fast. Plus it's a really good way to get the XP at the exact, at the exact same time, right? So I would say that this is literally the best EXP slash fragment slash money grinding spot if you can one shot these enemies. However, if you can one shot hollows, now in order to one shot hollows you need a lot of stuff. Now I'm using the world over heaven. If I had this item uh, at like level 100 and maybe 50 I could one shot hollows. And if I had my uh, chronostasis a little bit more upgraded. I could probably one-shot hollows and it would be more efficient for me to grind there, right? So, let me actually uh, upgrade this real quick. Let me get this to like level... Uh, yeah, let me get this to level 145. Maybe 150, yeah. So, I've upgraded my items quite a bit. Let me try it out again. See if it's actually... See if I can actually one-shot them. If I can, then, well, you can grind here. But you need a lot of stuff. That's the only... Prerequisite, prerequisite that's actually uh, not that fun. I, I still can't one shot hollows. Like, it's really hard. Maybe if they add more rebirths, I can. But it's really, really hard to one shot this guy. However, if you low rebirth, this is the best place where you can grind coins. Uh, you just need to make sure you don't die during this process. So the way you can do it if you're a low level player is if you tank every single hit with your shield. Every single time you hit them they will do a laser attack. After this you just need to gather them together and kill them. It's, it's easy but at the same time it really isn't, right? Because you need to be able to tank. So let's say I take damage from them. Let's see how much damage I take. So I take around 100 damage, right? A low level player at this stage of the game will probably not have my stats. You won't be able to take that many hits, but still that's the best place to grind for money. However, let's say you can't really take that many hits, so you can opt in to do this quest over here. Now it doesn't give as much money as that quest does, and it's not as easy to grind as the cybers, but if you're low rebirth, you can just do this. Uh, well, I one shot that guy, but basically you need to hit that guy in order to actually aggro him. Then you need to get them together and kill them. So it would look something like uh, I hit. Maybe my Kamehameha doesn't one shot it. Let me try it out. I'm not really sure. Maybe this doesn't kill him instantly. It doesn't. Okay, so basically you need to uh, tank a hit from this guy, you need to go here and then you go all the way to the bottom and you kill them. You won't get hit only if they're cursed, maybe they can climb over, but I mean, this is the second best way to grind money if you're low level. The third best one is obviously killing Cybers. Do not grind for drops, that's a waste of time, you just don't. Oh. I explain all of this now. What is money really used for? If you go all the way over here to the ruined city, there's an NPC. This NPC can sell you a wide variety of things. Oh, this one has magic gems and arrows. So, let's talk about the drop. So, it can drop you golden core, requiem, arrows. I actually have all the drops, so I can just show you guys. Um, so, it can drop you magic gems. Uh, these gems can be converted to these gems. The rarest one is obviously divine. So it can give you thunder, frost, flame, or wind. So these are used to get the uh, wind spirit, and they're used to craft stuff. So these are actually pretty RNG. So it might take you a while to get divine gems if you really want a good weapon. But I mean, it's worth it. It can sell you uh, arrows. These are basically your regular uh, gem pool. So let's say you're going to use 100 gems to get an item. This is the exact same thing. It just costs you money, so that means every 100 gems is worth 2,500 gold. Uh, Adamantite basically makes it so that any weapon that you have will get randomly upgraded by 10 levels. So if I... Uh, let me use one. 
to exemplify. So I use this and it upgraded my Shane Fist by 10 levels. Let me buy another one. Yeah, so. It basically just upgrades uh, a random we uh, weapon. These Requ Requiem arrows upgrade a random ability of yours by 10 levels. These are not worth buying because there, currently there's a bunch of powers in this game and it can upgrade anything by 10 levels. Like it legit could upgrade stuff like a uh, key blast, it can upgrade stuff like Rosengan, it can upgrade all these uh, uh, attacks that are pretty bad, so don't bother with that. Uh, you can also get golden cores now, these ones are the best, because you don't really need to craft that many equipments. Uh, you can survive with only having snake belt or serpent's tail and crafting the world over heaven. So there will be a 50-50 chance for you to get the correct upgrade. Now, <clears throat> however, I have a bunch of stuff that I like, like the Ice Cape, El Diablo, there's a bunch of stuff, so I'm not that efficient on upgrading my items with Golden Course, but either way, they're still the best, uh, they're still the best to upgrade stuff. So I would recommend you buying these if you really need a, a small boost on your equipment levels. You can also buy Devil Fruit. Now these are really good. This costs 15k each and they always give you a curse plus ability. I call these abilities, abilities epic or legendary. So there's always going to be uh, an epic ability that will drop to you. So let's say you're missing out on Sero or Supernova. You buy a bunch of Devil Fruits and then you get really a high chance on getting those abilities. So Devil Fruits are actually goaded to get those epic abilities. Dragon Balls, on the other hand, I would recommend you only getting this if you're missing out on a lot of blessed slash legendary powers. Because you can choose for anywhere between three, three things. So you can get either wealth, you can get experience, or you can get yourself a power which is going to be legendary. Now, in my opinion, the best thing you can get will be the experience if you're above Rebirth 80. Being above Rebirth 80 makes it so that every single time you use the experience thing on Dragon Balls gives you at least like 120 levels, so you almost Rebirth instantly from the get-go. So, Dragon Balls are extremely good to get experience, wealth is not worth getting because it's only 70k, and if you do the math, well, it costs you... You need 7 Dragon Balls, every single one costs you 25k. You need 175k to spawn uh, to spawn the dragon, right? And basically you're going to be on 105k money loss from getting the wealth thing. So it's not really worth using. You can also buy Rokakas, which basically reset your stat points. So if I use this, my stats go get reset and then I can well just put them again in magic because that's the only thing I, I really need to upgrade. So yeah, that is pretty much the entire... I'm maybe missing some... Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm missing out on the... Uh... You can actually spawn bosses. So you let's say you're missing out on Koyore. Okay, so let's go to the Hollow World. Let me just kill the current boss because there's a boss there. So let's say you need to grind Sero Essence from Coyote. Let me just kill Flower Captain real quick. Uh, okay. Let's say you're out, missing out on Sero Essence. You can basically use the spawner to, to spawn a boss. And then you can kill the boss to get drops. There's a chance, obviously, it's just like a world boss. Uh, now I have 28 summons. Cool. Just what I needed. <laughs> well, anyways. Yeah, so you can spawn bosses. That's about it. And they can drop you stuff like how it just dropped me a bunch of summons. Now, I only talked about money, let's talk about gems. Gems are a bit different. So gems, uh, I would recommend you to grind in maybe in a Mechan's Land or Fishman Waterfall. I'm going to explain why. If you're low rebirth, I actually don't really recommend you doing the grinding NPC strategy because it's not efficient. It only starts being efficient to grind NPCs once you rebirth 20 because you're going to get a, basically a free um, summon every time you kill a enemy that drops you epic items. 
So, the best way to actually get gems if you're a new player is every single time that you rebirth, you do every single side quest. Now, I'm going to show every single quest, quest line and location. So, there is a quest here. This is the first side quest. Now, the secondary is going to be the bandits location. I'm going to every single quest on foot. The second quest is going to be over here. This is going to be to kill the bandit leader. I didn't take it still, so you need to kill the bandit leader and it gives you gems. It gives you a hundred gems, but the more rebirths you have, the more gems you get. The third quest is the one where you need to go all the way over that NPC to deliver um, a message. You can do every single quest once per rebirth, you can do them multiple times. These are one-time quests that give you a lot of EXP. So this also gives you gems. Then there's the quest at level 35, I'm going to reset and go there because it's faster. The next quest is here at the police station. You need to pick up these trash cans over here. To pick them up you just need to click on them. As you can see, there's, when you hover them, you can see that my mouse cursor changes, you just need to click on them and you get the quest. The fourth quest to get gems is over here at the Shinobi Land. You need to talk with that NPC over there. And your goal is to kill this uh, mini boss. So, here, and I can one shot him actually. So, you can kill this boss over here. The next quest is going to be at the Fisherman Waterfall and it's going to be to kill Arlong. So, over here is Arlong, I can come over here, and I also one-shot him. <laughs> okay then, that's, that's something else. Uh, the next quest is going to be at the Mechans Land, it's going to be an NPC over here, and your job is to kill these four Namekians. Okay, once they're dead, actually I think you can do this quest every 24 hours, I'm not sure, maybe there's a, I don't know if it's every 24 hours, or if it's like every week, but I've already done this quest, this rebirth, and, I'm, and I can take them again, I'm not sure, but you can do th this quest every single rebirth, so I mean, maybe they're bugged, uh, no, they're not bugged, so you can either like take them every 24 hours or every week, I'm not sure though. Uh, but you can, but let's say you rebirth to 20 times in a single day, you can take this quest 20 times in a row. That's basically it. So th that quest is to kill Frieza. Uh, the next quest is going to be at Ruins of the City, and it's going to be to kill the androids, the NPCs over here. You can talk to Trunks. Yeah, so it's not giving me this quest, but it gave me all the other ones. So I'm not sure, maybe it's only once per rebirth. But yeah, it, basically to... To kill those two NPCs, the next quest is all the way over here, and it's to kill Cell. Uh, this boss also drops Father Son Kamehameha, which is the my Z ability. This might be a boss that's kind of hard for new, new players to kill. However, if you have some experience, it's really easy to kill Cell. So the next quest is actually going to be at the Hollow World. And it's going to be uh, the level 90 quest. It's going to allow you to kill the, the Arancars over here. So the best way to kill these guys, I can show it off, it's you go over here to the middle of these two. You aggro that guy. Well, it dies instantly, I guess. This also dying instantly, okay. So it would be to basically aggro those two guys, right? And to aggro that guy in the end with, let's say, an attack. So I'm going to aggro him with Kamehameha, let's see if he doesn't get one shot. I didn't get one shot, so it would basically to be like this, and then you chronostasis. And yeah, I'll, it's all cool and stuff. So it would be to do it like that, and then you get a bunch of gems and money and EXP. The last quest that gives you gems is going to be the one over here. Now this quest uh, makes you kill demon. If you're if you're not like a decent rebirth, you can't really kill him that easily. However, you can cheese him if you use a uh, death sting. 
it always deals half with the HP, so it's really easy to cheese the quest doing that. Plus there's a hidden quest over here that gives you some gems. Uh, your goal is to talk to Chin, and then there's going to be a sword all the way over there. This quest gives you only gems, this doesn't give you any coins or EXP, so you only do this if you really want gems. So, I'm going to go all the way down here, and I'm going to complete this quest by just punching the sword once. And the quest is complete. Um, yeah, these are the ways you can get gems every single rebirth. If I go over to Demon, you can see that this is side quest number 12. So, if you actually do the math, if you're low rebirth, let's say you're rebirth 0. So you get 12 quests each to give you 100 gems, plus let's count in Shin, so there's 13 quests, 100 gems each. If you multiply that by 100, right, so it's going to be 130,000 gems just from going to Hebert 100. You don't need to do anything else other than the mainline side quests, and then the mainline quests and the side quests. So just by doing quests, you get a bunch of gems. However, there's also a little detour that you can take. So once you rebirth 100, there's no other quest that you can take, right? You've already done every single quest. So the second best way to get gems would be, uh, well, after your really high rebirth, would be to actually farm uh, NPC drops. So one of the best spots you can actually grind uh, would be here. So there's five enemies. Every single enemy gives you a chance to drop you a broken armor piece. Broken armor pieces when you rebirth a hunt. And I misclicked the spot. Anyways, you can also come from here, it doesn't really matter. So, broken armor pieces sell for 25 gems each. Let me just drop one real quick and, I'll, and I can show it off. So, it dro dropped me 21 broken armor pieces. Right? Now. Since I'm rebirth 100, I drop 21. If you rebirth 1, you drop 1. If you rebirth 5, you drop 2. If you rebirth 10, you drop 3, and so on and so forth, right? That's how it works. Now, let's go all the way over here back to the first NPC, and you can see that the broken armor pieces each sell for 25 gems a pop, right? So, let's say I sell this 21 this 21 I would get 525 gems so it's 5 free pulls right so once you really high rebirth and you only want to grind gems I mean if you rebirth 100 don't really have any reason to be to farm gems so I mean this is basically a, let's say in the future they are the gem store right uh, that would be basically be the best way to get gems but other than that there's really no use for gems gems are basically a Play a new player's best way to get uh, summons because I'm going to be completely honest with you uh, coins are much more valuable than gems unless you're a new player if you're a new player then yeah you can make the argument and sure gems are more useful because you're missing out on a lot of these overpowered uh, spells right and since you're missing out on all of these overpowered abilities and then, well, obviously, gems are going to be more useful than coins. But still, you can buy arrows for coins, which are literally just normal summons. But, oh, cool, a magical gem. But yeah, um, since arrows are basically the same thing as gems, you can grind out coins, which are just as efficient as grinding gems, so yeah. Well, this guide was a bit longer than my last one, but it's longer for a good reason. Uh, there's a lot of quests, there are a lot of, there's a lot of ways to grind money, but basically, a too long didn't watch, maybe you just wanted to go all the way to the end and you didn't really watch the entire video. Well, the best way to grind coins is if, if you can one-shot Cybers, you get this quest, and then you kill every single Cyber instantly. This is the best way to get coins, because you can do this quest uh, 3 times faster than you can kill hollows. If you really overpower, let's say you have a level 200, uh, level 200 uh, equipment, like the World Over Heaven level 200, and you have Chronostasis level 200 as well, 
you can actually kill hollows in one hit. I don't think you can kill cursed hollows, but you can kill hollows in one hit. So if you can actually kill them in one hit, the best way to get uh, coins would be to go over to this quest, get it, and would be to go over here and kill every single hollow in a hit. Now, I'm still missing out on like 100 damage. So it's a stretch because I'm I have these stats and I pretty much have maxed out gear other than really this. I mean it's a bit of a stretch. So unless you can one shot hollows, I recommend you just grinding cybers. If you want gems, I really just recommend you doing the side quests. Uh, unless let's say you rebirth a hundred. If you rebirth a hundred, the best way to to get gems would be to simply go over to Namekian's land, get this quest over here, and to grind broken armor pieces. Every single time you drop an armor piece it gives you 500 gems, and let's say in the future they add a gem store, then this would be realistically your best way to grind out gems. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to like and subscribe, and see ya!